Hello everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on, I forget the name of it, <laughs> Underwater Love, Underwater Love. And I have already done a bunch of cutting, but I'm trying to reconstruct it so you guys can see how I got from here to there. So I am going to use this page and actually, um, sorry, I had some red paint on me. Um, from the 12 by 12 collection and I'm gonna use two of those packs. And the reason I'm using two packs is because of this page. I really wanted this to be the cover of the album and I wanna do layering, so I needed two of this and there's only one per pack. So that's how I came up with this. I am doing an eight and a half by eight and a half by two and a half album. That's gonna be the back, which also comes from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And this is gonna be the front. And uh, these clips are just holding this paper in place. It's not glued down yet, that's why it's there. Anyways, just wanna give you kind of a heads up. We are working on the cover. So the first thing I did was cut this guy out of one of the 12 by 12s. So the next thing I did, and you can see where he came out right here. And I'll take this off, bloop, bloop, bloop. And you can see where his nose is missing. So I just came in and cut him off, okay? And I came across and started cutting him out at eight and one eighth, because I made this album actually eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter instead of eight and a half. Now, if you're gonna do an eight and a half by eight and a half, the cover does not uh, affect the size of the pages inside the album. It only affects the cover and the spine. So I just made this a quarter inch smaller than usual. The pages will be eight by eight. But at any rate, you're going to come across and trim at either eight and one eighth or eight and three eighths, depending on if you're doing eight and a quarter or eight and a half. So that's that starting point to cut the rest of your um, horse seahorse out of. Then uh, once you get this guy out of the way, you can trim the rest of it across, which is what these two pieces are. So hopefully that, that made sense. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to start from here, the right hand edge, and you're come, gonna come across to eight and one eight, or eight and um, three eighths, depending on if it's eight, and a half or eight and a quarter. And I'm doing eight and a quarter, so I went eight and one eight. So that's what the the uh, what I've done so far, okay? So from, so it seems like we're gonna use this, but we're not because of this big hole here. So now I'm using, actually on the second sheet, I came across this way and went eight and one eight. On this one, I went this way, eight and one eight. So basically I wind up with this to layer and then I took all of this and we're gonna layer it here. And on my second sheet, I just did a better job of trimming this out um, and was a little bit neater about where things were cut apart. So I'm gonna layer this and layer this. And then I see we've got this hole here, so I'm going to use my seahorse to cover part of it. So now you can start to see things are popping, which is what I want. Um, what I did on all of these thin pieces is I put a bead of glue and I let it dry, so it's a little bit thicker. I'm gonna do that one more time so I don't have to try to get chipboard behind it and it'll help it stand up. And when I say a bead of glue, a nice thick bead of glue, and it will take some time to dry, but then it'll stand up on its own. And then we can, um, once it's dry, add a little bit more glue and glue it down to the paper and it should stand up a little. Um, so anything that's got these sharp points, I'm trying to um, put a thick layer of glue to, to basically build it up a little. Everything that's big enough to put a piece of chipboard behind, do that just because it's easier. Now I'm gonna set, I'm gonna add a little more here. I'm gonna set this aside and let this all dry, but it's gonna go layered on top of here. Set that aside. Now on the seahorse, I've added chipboard to the whole seahorse. And then from here up, I've added a second layer of chipboard because it's going on top of this. 
So it's going to lay half on and half off. So that's why I need the second layer of chipboard up here. So that's what we did here. So once you add or lay this in and figure out where your seahorse is gonna go, that's where you know from that point up, you're gonna have that second layer of chipboard. Now on this, I did one layer of chipboard. Now I've done these edges where um, it's layered all the way across and I don't like the way it looks on the side when it's on the book. So what I did that I'm gonna to try to use to solve that is I inset my chipboard. I'm actually gonna glue this edge directly to this paper flat. And then basically it'll be a beveled edge that comes up instead of that gap. So my plan is to glue the very edge straight down. Then we use the chipboard. I will leave everything else elevated. So we get the, the layered look that we're looking for, but we don't have the two papers with the chipboard in between showing on the outside of the book. So that's the current plan. So I do need to add some more glue to these areas to um, to build them up a little bit so they will not go straight down. So I'm going to let all that dry and then when I come back we are going to start layering all these goodies in. Okay and I'm probably going to go over real quickly again how I came up with all these pieces. Be back soon! Hey everyone it's Daphne and I'm back and we are going to finish up on the cover. So as I showed you in the beginning of the video, I used two 12 by 12s of this uh, design sheet and fussy cut these two major elements. So this element and this element. I had originally had a piece going all the way to the top and I decided to cut it off uh, right at this leaf. Um, so that's simple enough. This came, each of these came from my second sheet. This came from, uh, cut off the side of uh, the first sheet and here's the trail of where originally it was located and it was much higher up on the page. So we're going to bring it down. Now in addition to that I've got a couple of other things that I want to share with you that I did uh, since we were together uh, working on this. So I pulled these in. Now I fussy cut this from the second sheet as well as this. I've got a single layer of chipboard uh, behind it. I've got a single uh, single level of chipboard behind this whole piece. And my plan is to bow this slightly. So I'm gonna glue this edge so it's gonna wrap down slightly and I'm gonna leave this edge open. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And the reason I'm doing that is I didn't like having the double open edge uh, on the side that you open the book from. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's what I'm doing and that's why I'm doing it. So we're going to get a little lift here and it's going to create a bit of a shadow. So that in and of itself is, starts to create some level of depth. Now what I did on these little tiny pieces is I put a, um, a bead of glue, let it dry, a bead of glue, and then let it dry. And one more time, put a bead of glue to stiffen these up and I'm going to tack them down and they won't be as flat as if I did, didn't put anything on them. Hope that makes a little sense. Okay, I think we're ready. So I'm gonna go from the edge in because I want this edge to be completely flush. And then based on that, I'll let the rest of it fall where it may. And you just have to coach it a little bit and hold it on the outside edge, I think, for a minute to keep it in place because it wants to lift. Okay, so having that appearance of depth on this side is less important. Having it on this side is what I'm, is what I'm aiming for. Okay, now I'm pressing down where the chipboard was, is getting my tips into place. And you can see that they're not going flat and that's because I built a substrate with glue. Okay. Okay, this is my second level, single layer of chipboard. It's gonna go right on top of this. Give us some extra dimension. There we go. I also fussy cut a second fish. 
So I'm either going to put it here or here. I haven't decided. And this third fish was out here. And I think I'm just going to push it out a little bit further. And I've got, I'm going to have a single layer of chipboard here as well. So let me see what I want to do. I think I want to do it this way. And if you look closely, you can see these leaves are going over the fish. And this fish is on top of its leaf. And that's why I'm choosing to layer this one. Okay, and I think I'm just going to put this guy out here a little bit. Mm, I'd say right about there. Okay, so far so good, huh? A little bit of glue there. Okay, now for this side, it's fussy cut with a single layer of chipboard. All of these little uh, pointy areas, I've built it up a substrate by putting three layers of glue. So it's going to go in just like this, but I wanted to share with you uh, close up where I chose to cut my lines. Now it's hard to see probably in the video, but there's a green leaf that comes right up to this fish. So that's what I did. I probably could have cut into this blue a little more, but I don't think I need to since I'm going right on top of the old version. Well, you know what, if I don't have chipboard there, Actually, I do. So I'm going to leave it as is and add some glue and we're going to put this down. And I've got a little bit of overhang here. I'm going to try to do the same thing on this side. It may not be as successful because I, I made it a little tighter. But if it stands away from the spine, I'm fine with that. And once I get this in and a couple other things layered, I will show you the result. Need a little more glue here. So I'll show you um, on this side. See how I've closed that seam? See how it's open down here or slightly open? And then it's closed on this side. So what I would recommend is when you're putting your chipboard in, give yourself um, a half inch. I think I've got about a quarter inch on this side. That wasn't quite enough. Over here, it makes for a nice smooth transition. Over here, it's gonna look a little sharper. A little bit more glue here. Okay, I'll hold that for a second. And then our next major element is going to be our seahorse. Because of the way I fussy cut this and fussy cut the bottom of the seahorse out of here, we are going to cover that up. Now, because this is already on a single layer of chipboard, I have put two layers on the bottom and three layers on the top. So this is this is the line where it has three layers on the head and neck and then the body through the tail is two layers. So that's going to dictate how far down I come onto this single layer. So all of this works. Now I just visually want to figure out, I think he's kind of crowding that fish a little. So I'm going to come up a little bit more, and I think I'm liking that. 
So that's where I'm planning on putting them. I, this is actually tape, so... Sorry about my dog. Everybody's walking their dogs right now. And she thinks she owns the neighborhood. I don't know if it's a shepherd thing or if it's just her nature. Okay, now I'm also going to add a little bit of glue. Just for... Sorry, it's static. <laughs> just to make sure I get it all down. And uh, the nose, I, I actually added a very thin piece of chipboard. But you could do the same thing with layers of glue to create sort of a, a, a substrate to hold the nose up a little bit. You definitely want to reinforce it with something because that's the point that's most likely to snag on something or for your hand to drag across and, and tear. Okay, I made a little bit of a mess, so I'm going to try to scrape that up. Before it dries too much. There we go. A little bit of excess glue on the nose. I also put less layers on the nose, so the nose actually tilts down, um, which should help prevent it from catching. If you don't have a tool to do this, just cut a pointy-ended piece of um, cardstock and use it. I'm just tracing where the glue squished out. Okay, these guys are all in. Okay, so the last thing is I have these clusters of flowers, which I like, and I put them together in a triad and glued them on a piece of paper because I want them to kind of look like um, like a sea anemone or coral. And so I'm kind of fussing around to see if I like it, um, but that's what I've done. And it just kind of gives it a little more texture and interest on the cover because this piece of sea anemone um, was mostly obstructed by this layer. I was thinking it might be fun to put, put a little something here, like the fish is coming out of it. And I have the orange and this green uh, go nicely. And these are, this is a pack of the Prima flowers. And it comes with three colors. It comes with the peach, the blue, and the green. And I'm using the blue in this sort of aqua color. Um, and I think I like this, so I think I'm gonna, so let's look at it without, without, and I think it just gives it a little extra something. So I also may come back and stuff a few more bits and pieces behind it that um, make it look like entrails are coming off uh, these little sections. And I would do that with um, one of my dyes that makes, um, floral leaves. So the Graphic 45 one does, but I would most likely use a piece of scrap from here and die cut it and just tuck a couple of pieces so it's not just a blobbed flower. And we've got a little, just like I've got this little intro coming up, a few more pieces like that. So in fact, I'll, I'll plan on using the Graphic 45 die that comes with the tags. Um, there's a little uh, two, two piece dot, two pieces of the die are a spray of floral leaves. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to cover up that and hopefully it'll look like these stems are coming up from it. And it's kind of a fun, I don't know, what do, what do you call it? I, I keep wanting to call it coral, but um, it's more like a sea anemone. So we've got that nice splash of color. Okay, so that's it for the cover, except like I said, I might add a couple of those little details. The other thing I might add to it, and if I do, I'll do a second, uh, an additional video um, part either attached to this or somewhere else, is I really wanted to add um, uh, one of these guys. But when I laid it in, because it's blue and this is blue, it didn't look right, and this pink one 
isn't scaled right. So I may go back and forth. The other thing you can do to help this blend in a little bit more naturally, if you don't want this contrast, is you can fussy cut this, glue it under, and it'll look like the bottom of this. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Here's some other leaves that you can fussy cut to tuck behind these um, flower clusters to make it look more like it's part of it. And then uh, this beautiful, that is coral, spray of coral. So that's what I've got so far. Um, like I said, I may add just a couple of very small details to it. And then also I'm, I'm really considering some kind of a title here. So flowers don't naturally go underwater, but I'm happy with the way this looks. Having looked at it both ways off and on, I'm happy with that. And um, this is what's essentially left from after fussy cutting all of this out. I've got a couple of strips from the top. Like here's, the, here's part of the top, right? And um, I've got this coral spray, and that's a good part of that is actually tucked under here to either use someplace else or to even cut some of these fish out and add on here. So there's a little bit more that, to work with if you want to add a little more interest. So that's it for um, the cover. Okay, and if I do anything significant, like I said, I'll add another part to this video. But for now, I'm going to call it done, and we're going to add it to the cover. So I did everything offline. And part of the reason I did that was I wasn't sure if I was gonna wrap this all the way around or not. And I am gonna wrap it all the way around and I'm gonna layer this just on top. Normally, I would have a black strip here, but I think I'm just gonna have that wood plank go straight into um, the cover. So that means we need to glue the, the uh, back side of the cover on. So I, I clipped it on. I hit it with a, a fine mist of water on both sides and I've been letting it sit for a few days to sort of take on that shape and it just makes it that much easier when I go to install it. Oops, I still got two more clips. So I'm going to add tape. From this edge to about right here and then this part will be glued because it'll be flat, but the, the place where the hinge is and where it's gonna flex, I wanna have tape. So let's get that in. I'm using, I'm using 5 8 inch tape, 3 8 is fine as well. And two more strips and then the rest will be glue. If you know, um, I'm going to use mahogany, which is my go-to color for Graphic 45. Just like to knock off that white core. See the white core here? That's what I'm working on knocking off. But you could really go heavy on the distress, especially on this sheet. And this matches perfectly. back down. 
So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a couple of strips that are in the middle. I'm going to get it located, uh, centered up and down on the spine, and then I'll take, start taking additional strips off. So here's a score line, here's a score line. I'm going to take off a couple of the centers. And it just makes it easier to lift it back off if you don't get it on straight. You don't want to take all this tape off and have to fight the whole thing if it doesn't go on straight the first time. <clears throat> Additionally, I'm going to add a little bit of glue to give me some wiggle time. So when you put glue down, by its very nature, it's a bead, which means it's elevated. So you don't have to cover every inch of your, of your adhesive. That bubble, even after it spreads out a little bit, is what's lifting and holding this off the cardboard. So that's all you're looking for. Okay, do I have a front or a back? Not really. Sometimes one of the corners will turn out a little bit better than the other, and so that's kind of what I'm looking for. They want the best corners on the front. And I think I like it this way. Okay, so again, now my goal is to center that strip up and down. Before I go in and take off, I have to stand up. Before I go in and take off any additional tape. Now, I don't want to just look at it from here. I want to look at it from here, too. And that looks pretty darn good. Oops, that's a little, oops, I'm a little too wet yet. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to hold that in place for a second. Or I'm going to try to hold it in place. It keeps wobbling around on me. Okay, that looks good. Finish this. The rest of it, will, it won't wiggle around after we get another strip of tape um, exposed because we're not going to add any more glue. It's really just to make sure we got that in the right place. So I'm going to give that a second to settle in. I'm coming up a little bit shorter than I wanted. But it's not bad. Not enough to change. Okay, and then from here on out, it's cool.
Now when you're going to fold it again, be very careful. I'm going to actually use my water bottle and let it stretch a little. Okay, that's as far over as it's ever going to go. Now normally when I'm doing a wrap, I go on and on about holding the book open at a 45 degree angle for the front and back cover. And, and that is really important um, if you're doing both sides at the same time. That's why I left this side open. So I can still go to my 45 degrees and then when I close it, it'll be fine. And the reason you do that is if you do it completely flat, completely open and flat, when you go to close your book, you'll have a buckle there. And uh, conversely, if you do it completely closed, um, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. If you do it completely flat and you go to close it, you could um, tear your paper. And the reverse, if it's completely closed and you go to open it, you're going to have a buckle. So you want to consider holding it at a 45 degree. So if this is 90 degrees, right, 90 degrees, there's about 45. You add a little bit so that it's going to stretch around as I hold it. And I got to stand up to do this too. Part of it is I have to hold it up off the table to, so that I'm holding it at the 45 degrees. That looks lovely. Okay, so there's our back, our spine, and now we're ready to add our cover. So the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that the height of my spine matches the height of my cover, and if it doesn't, this is my opportunity to trim it so that it does. I think my cover, sorry, getting a lot of my head. It looks right. Okay, looks good. I thought I was gonna have to trim it, but I think it looks right. Again, this is a static element, so I'm adding glue. There's our cover. Yay! Look at all that dimension. So pretty. Might sneak into there with a um, black marker. Cover up some of that. Uh, I used a combination of chipboard and foam there. One of the reasons I'm so such a fan of chipboard is it just doesn't glare at you like the uh, foam does. So there we go. Okay, I'll be back soon.